Hello once again, I'm going to do a quick tip video on drilling on the lathe. It's common practice to drill into end grain. When you're turning an end grain box, a lidded vessel of some sort, and I do a lot of larger hollow forms, I'll take a drill like this and I'll just drill out the center. That makes turning that a lot easier and if I'm doing a little lidded box, sometimes I drill the center out and I also drill for depth. So let me readjust my camera and I'll show you some of those uh, drilling procedures. Now let me show you a couple of the drills that I use. This is a half inch drill bit chucked up into a handle. It's too big. I would not advise that. I very seldom use that because it's very aggressive and it kind of gets out of control. You're better off using a Jacobs chuck with a drill bit like that. I'll show you that in a second. Here's one that I usually use. Quarter inch drill bit, nice and long, in a handle, and I drill out hollow forms that might be 8 or 10 inches in depth, and I often use that as my depth uh, gauge for those vessels. Here's another one that I typically use for small items like a lidded box and I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to turn my lathe on and I'm going to face off this little waste block of wood. Let's kind of true that up a little bit. Now this is a piece of alder. It's very soft wood and I'm just using this for my demonstration. What you need to do is develop a little divot right here with a square tool. That could be a beading and parting tool. It could be like this spear point scraper or even the, uh, the, the toe of a skew chisel. So I just put a little uh, divot in there take my tool rest out of the way so I'm going to just use this small drill bit in, in the handle and I'm going to drill that out now that recess gives me a place to start and I like to use a twist drill this is really a metal drill for drilling metal but it's got a, a kind of a, a cone shape on the end this might give you a better view of that so what I'm trying to do is uh, create a starting point there for my drill don't drill very fast you don't need to And I can check my depth, just put my finger on there if I'm doing the lid or the base of a box. Now here's one tip about drilling on the lathe. If I do want to make a bigger hole, I'll just drill a small hole with this drill bit and then maybe go to a, a bigger one. So let's just make that hole a little bit larger in diameter. And that works pretty good right there. So, and maybe let's try this big one. This is a half inch, and I let's just say it's not my favorite. just to show you that it can be done. So that's a good technique. Now all I need to do with my box, my lid or my base, I can just bring my tool rest up there and now I can hollow that out. I'll just do a little bit of that. Now ordinarily we're going to go from the center out and, and try to cut across the grain when we're hollowing.
All right. And you can see how much easier that is when that center is not there. Again, this is usually done on end grain. If you're doing a bowl, which I just happen to have a bowl sitting here, you don't really need to drill out that center because you're cutting in a different direction. You're cutting across the grain very easily and you don't really need a, a center hole on that. Although some people do and it's not a bad way to establish the depth on a bowl. Well, this is what I do all day long, folks. Now, here's an important point about using your tailstock to drill a hole. What I have here is a Jacob's chuck. And if you get one of these, get the keyless, and they're very nice. I got this from Craft Supplies. This is much better for accuracy. You could be doing a little inlay or something on the top of that box and you could use your tailstock to do this. So we'll just drill a little bit of a hole. Now it's important to clear your shavings. I didn't go very deep. I wanted to move on to something else. Here's another tool that's pretty handy to have. This is a drill bit. Again, it's a, a metal cutting bit. A twist. They call this a twist drill. It's got a Morse taper on the end of it. And I've got four different sizes of this. So we just put that into our tailstock. Right there lock it down and this is a little bit bigger than the the bit I was just using so we'll just drill a little bit with that make sure you don't hold on to this right here in case that uh, twist drill bit twists and you'll cut yourself so back here a little bit and you can line it up you see it wants to move a little bit on there You can't see it on the right side here, your left. I'm advancing that quill and just drilling that hole. So that's pretty nice to have. And again, start with a smaller hole and then you can always enlarge it with a bigger drill bit. Now let me show you one last thing that I'm working on. Now I'm going to just part this off to the depth of that hole and I'll start over. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to show you about drilling is something that I learned from Mike Joukowsky, the famous hollow form turner. Mike is an excellent turner and demonstrator. And when he first started, he tells a story about drilling a hole into a piece of wood. Well, he picked up a masonry bit. This is a concrete bit for drilling into, you know, cement. Why would you use this? Let me try to give you a good view of this. This cutting part right here is, this cutting edge right here is proud of the shaft of this drill bit. So it clears the shavings really well. Now I just picked this up yesterday and I'm going to start with a smaller masonry bit and let's just see what happens here. All I'm doing is presenting an idea. It may seem a little bit crazy, but it actually works pretty good. So I've got this into my Jacob's chuck. Let's bring up the tailstock. stock. 
Now I very easily drilled right through that with that drill bit. That works pretty good. I need to play around a little bit and get a longer or larger piece of wood and see how that works. So let's put the bigger masonry bit in there. We'll see how that does. Now as I prepare for the next operation, I'm going to let you know that at the very end of this video, I'm going to have a short segment on brad point bits and Forstner bits that I have not dealt with up to this point. Well, I think sometimes my job is not to give you all the answers, or maybe even the answer, but maybe the question. Does this work? Masonry bit? Well, I think it's got possibilities. Whenever you're drilling into end grain, slow speed, a couple hundred RPMs, you don't need to be turning really, really fast. That doesn't help, and it's a matter of safety. If one of those handheld drills gets out of control, that can be really unsafe. Start with a smaller hole. You can increase it with a larger diameter drill bit. I'm not sure about the concrete drill bit. We'll have to mess around with that. And uh, if you have any other comments about drilling, I'd love to hear them. Put them on the uh, comment area there and other people can read them. Thank you very much and uh, drill safely. As I was finishing up this video, it occurred to me that I missed a couple drill bits. I could spend all day long drilling holes in wood. Well, here is one of my dedicated drill setups. It's a Forstner bit. And that's a really, really nice drill. I've got this set up for some of my hollow forms. It's about an inch and an eighth, I think. And that's a good drill. I'll show you some close-ups of that. Now what I'm holding up right now is a brad point bit and I incorrectly labeled this as something else but if you're an old woodworker like me you probably know about brad point bits and they're really an excellent woodworking drill bit and if you're new to wood turning maybe it's new to you but it's an excellent drill bit and I'll give you close-ups of that in a second. You can start that and drill for depth or for other different reasons. Let me give you some close-ups of these different drill bits. Now you're looking at a Forstner bit, and a Forstner bit is well known for drilling a flat-bottomed hole. And clamped on your drill press, you can drill a very nice hole without even using the lead point on that bit. But we use it in wood turning, and it's a great tool to have. And finally, the brad point bit. This is a premier drill bit in woodworking. And we can use it in wood turning for a lot of different reasons and a lot of different procedures. It's an excellent tool. As you can see, it has a great lead point from that view. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, and I will talk to you next time.